All right, we'll call the um, April 21st meeting of the Conway Board to order. And we're doing this meeting by Zoom video conference. And Tom is recording this meeting so that um, it can be viewed later by our residents and the public. Uh, I'll start off by uh, reading the agenda so everybody knows what we're going to be doing. We have minutes for the April 9th meeting and the April uh, 13th meeting. We'll talk about meetings attended by select board members and uh, probably by Zoom or conference call. We'll have comments. Uh, old business includes further discussion on the new Mohawk Trail Woodlands Partnership Grant. Uh, and then we're gonna talk about policy for deciding a town ready the town is meeting for town ready uh, because that has been postponed from uh, May 11th to June 8th. Then we're going to review the draft for notifying the town regarding the town meeting postponement. Okay, uh, we have nothing under new business. Uh, okay, and that's it for the agenda. All right, so first item uh, has everybody read the minutes for the April 9th meeting? Yes, I have, John. Okay, yeah, is, yeah. is everybody happy with those? Yes. Okay. I, I thought we voted them last week. Maybe we didn't. Uh, uh, anyway, I don't mind voting them again, but I just... I think we voted the April 6th. Yeah, that on was the, April that was, 9th. That was the 6th. At ninth. Oh, maybe that was it. I remember yeah. they were rushed. Okay, great. Yeah. yeah. All right. So everybody's read those. Yeah. Any yes. additions or corrections? No, they're fine. Okay. I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes for April 9th. Second. Yes. Second. Yes. All in favor? Aye. Yes. All right. Um, make a motion that we approve the minutes for the April 13th meeting. Any additions or corrections to that? No, they were fine as well. Fine as well. Okay, I'll make a motion that we accept the meeting minutes for April 13th. Do I have a second? Yes. yes. All in favor? Aye. Yes. Okay. Meetings attended by select board members. I guess we don't, we're a little light on this. Philip, we got anything? Meetings? He's thinking. He's thinking. Okay. Think. No, um, my 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 thing is really glitzy. Every, are, did you just call on me to talk about what I did this week? Yeah. Yeah. Right. I'm just, all right. So so um, yeah. Is it my turn? Yeah. It's your turn. Yep. All right. Um. So Thursday Thursday I listened in on the governor's round book. Um, uh, thing with the, the uh, D Desi and all the school superintendents um, and so that was that was really interesting the forecast that the state the state uh, itself might not have budget numbers until after June 30th mm. yeah. um, w which is like a wow uh, and also the governor saying that um, uh, even uh, that that in Massachusetts, when everything open, you know, if, if things do, do open up, it's going to be with mandatory social distancing and all kinds of other things as well, um, which I thought was really pertinent to our town, you know, our town meeting discussion, just that, yeah, you know, if we're going to do it, it's got to be in a place where we can do social distancing for real, um, which sort of is the ball field. Um, well, it, it may well have to be outside. If and, we indeed have it on June 8th, we, we don't know that yet. But I mean, it, it, it seems like it's not gonna be by June 8th, but maybe end of June, July. Um, but at, at any rate, you know, that when you just think about, you know, even the, just, just getting in and out of the gymnasium at the grammar school, you can't stay six feet away from someone walking right next to you. So um, the, I, the, the grammar school is a problem. And it's definitely going to be a problem. 
and um, we should chalk it off the list and just, you know, uh, uh, but, but the, the, so, so that was, and, and then Thursday was a, um, a school committee meeting by a Conway school committee meeting by Zoom where the school budget was finally officially passed because um, there's been so many canceled meetings. Um, but the, uh, w which was the same 2% numbers that we had before. Um, but a a as far as the school goes, I was really impressed to hear about the structure that they have sort of created in the virtual world, that they have an organized, coherent school day, um, and that they're averaging 100% attendance, which is better than they averaged um, before the coronavirus. <laughs> um, and that they're, you know, that, that they were able to supply the, the, the uh, computers to the handful of kids that didn't have them. They were able to get um, internet to the one or two families that didn't have it. And um, it's sort of uh, everybody's sort of, uh, got, you know, that's actually still functioning and the kids are learning and they're doing stuff every day. And it's, uh, it was, it was impressive to see that sort of the thing. And, you know, we did talk about the, 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 uh, the, the letters that Sunderland and Deerfield have sent out. Um, and we know what the, the situation is that the, the long and the short of it is, is it's really hard to do anything budget wise until you know what the state's numbers are, especially in education. Like how, how can we do an education budget without knowing what the transportation reimbursement is going to be? Well, you know, like that's, that. that's, that's part of this whole situation is they didn't actually pass a budget, did they? The school? Yeah. No, no. 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 The, the school committee passed its budget that was, you know, in the works for four months, whatever. If that's, if that's what you mean, the, the, uh, the state has not passed a budget or is not. But, yeah. but, the, but the school can't possibly have a final budget based on what's happening with the state. No, correct. We went through our budget process, which we had never finished before this. Okay. So now we've done what we, you know, it was the same budget that you all saw, um, but it had never been officially voted on. We had the public meeting, but then the follow that, that following meeting was canceled. Um, so, so, and that was, it seems like forever, but it was really only a few weeks ago. Um, so, so, you know, that, that, but everybody knows that the numbers are going to change. Um, probably. Uh, essentially but, we would, we would hope that the, um, the chapter 70 money stay in place, but we don't know that yet, you know, so we don't know what the school budgets are actually going to be when it comes down to it. And, and then now, the financial do, do you, situation at the state level is, is really in flux. And, and to hear numbers casually being tossed around as to what the state's deficit is now, not de deficit is like the wrong word, but projections, the, the decrease in projections of yeah. you know, there's five to seven billion dollar difference Curious. between what it's they thought. Curious. And, and um, yeah, and so they have to sort of, there's a lot of decisions that they have to make too. But uh, I, I actually, after listening to it all, I actually felt better about Governor Baker's uh, priorities and, and all that. And I thought, you know, uh, yeah, you know, it's, you know, he, he was all, he was all about listening to the health department first. Let's listen to the docs first. Let's listen to the experts first. And then let's decide based on what they have to say, which is kind of what you would ask for a governor. So. Sure. I was, I was a little distressed that the governor um, basically tied himself into New York and New Jersey as far as, you know, lifting these restrictions, because we're, we're totally, especially Western Massachusetts, we're totally different than happening down in New York and New Jersey. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. So. All right. Uh, thank you, Phil. Robert? Uh, you so meetings? I had a number of Zoom meetings. Uh, we had on Tuesday, we had a Conservation Commission Zoom meeting. Mainly we talked about um, uh, a project that Eversource is working on kind of up in the northern part of town near my house, kind of, there's a, a power line that goes along near Pine Hill Road where it crosses the Shelburne Falls Road. And there's three or four massive towers that they're gonna be replacing. They're currently wood, they're putting in metal ones. It starts there at Shelburne Falls Road and it's that, that 
power line clearing that goes back into Ashfield. And, uh, and, you know, they're, they're following all the rules they have to follow. We, you know, we, we supported their project. The things that we might worry about are all kind of mandated as best practices by the state. And as long as they do them, then we have no basis for objecting. And they're not really cutting down lots of trees, but they're working around lots of wetlands. Uh, so that's a, uh, and then we have a number of other site visits we'll be doing. There's a lot of work going on, even though we're all sort of shut down. Um, right, right. There was a marijuana hearing on Thursday, I think it was, uh, a Zoom meeting. We're looking at the, um, the, the set of changes that uh, a bunch of neighbors around the marijuana farm want to make. And uh, they're going to put them up for town vote. I'm not sure the planning board, the planning board will take a vote on it, but it, since it's then going to be going in front of town meeting, uh, you know, it'll be the town meeting vote that really decides it. Right. And then, and then there was a, a, we had a long cable advisory meeting on Friday. We're still trying to finalize what, what's called the ascertainment, which is basically telling Comcast how important FCAT and cable is to the people of Conway. So we're still finalizing that document. It should go out maybe tomorrow. So that was right. that. Was that. Thank, thank you, Bob. Uh, I had an MMA board meeting last week, and of course the, the whole thing was uh, COVID-19 and the budget and how things are going. And again, you know, things are very unsettled. I had a um, Massachusetts Selectments Association board of directors meeting last week as well. We're trying to figure out how to do uh, programs uh, for later in the year. Uh, Friday, I had a meeting with the... Um, Conway um, emergency management personnel. Um, we're doing very well on that front in terms of personal protective equipment, you know, masks and gowns um, and that type of stuff. Uh, we haven't had many situations where we've had, where we've had to use those, those personal protective equipment, but um, Everything seems to be doing okay here in Conway in terms of the number of cases. So we're, we're in pretty good shape. Yeah, I noticed that there were a few towns that had so few cases that they couldn't, you know, rate them. They were, you know, put a, put a percentage they were, number. They were zero. Yeah. One of them. Well, they didn't say zero. They said less than five. Yeah, there were some that were less than five. We were among those. And uh, there were... I guess maybe half a dozen of the very small towns in Franklin County who were at zero, or at least none reported at that point in time. Okay, any public comment? No public comment. Okay, uh, we'll go on to old business. Uh, first item is further discussion on the new Mohawk Trail Woodlands Partnership Grants. Anna, do you have any information uh, for us on that? Yes, um, I thought maybe Allison Wright was going to be calling in um, because, as you know, I've been working with her on this exploration. Uh, we had been in touch with what turns out to be a Mohegan Mohawk Trail. Um, council uh they have an annual meeting and uh they have looked at this section of the trail that we wanted to um there's a big a, there's been a big washout for a long time at the at the end of station road when you try to get to barbell's ferry the trail routes you to the road back to the road and uh, one of the one of the people on this council is uh, works for Great River Hydro, and they had in the past done extensive research on what it would take to fix 
the the two smaller smaller holes sinkholes or uh, and it was enormously expensive and therefore was not going to be done it's the um it's the old railway bed and a bunch of culverts under there and they're all collapsing or they're collapsing and it's unsafe and it would cost like a million dollars so forget it um which is understandable so that basically put an end to our efforts to apply to write up a good grant application to uh, fix the Conway section of this trail. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of other trail improvements that, that, that need to be done that folks I've met with over the years want to have done, but I think some of those will come to light in the forest management plan for the two town forests. Um, and you know perhaps they can get close to specifications on large, largely trail linkages and trail go arounds um, so you know given the time frame and the situation i uh you know i personally am going to pass on this grant uh, you know i just we don't have a good a good application does uh, that open it up for the carbon trust that we were talking about? Yes, before. yes. And I can report on that, that Allison, you all know Allison, right? I don't. Allison Hunter Wright lives off of Shelburne Falls Road. She's been here a long time. She, uh, and she is the state forester. She's the, the state service forester, works for DCR, and her territory covers Conway and a bunch of neighboring towns. I'm sure, uh, and uh, she had talked to her supervisor. So giving us some assistance on our forest plans or, you know, forest grants was certainly appropriate. Uh, so she's been a good resource. She said that she had a phone call with Mary Wigmore and Mary Wigmore is like the principal in the winning bid for the state forest management plans. As you may recall, I mean, there were two components to those grants. One's the forester and one is the outreach person. Mary herself is a well-respected forester. Uh, but in for this for this for these grants, she's functioning as the the contact person, the facilitator, the management person and so forth. So, and Mary also has been involved with the carbon sequestration that involved like three towns in Springfield, in the Springfield area in Westfield perhaps. Now I did hear that one of those towns sort of fell apart. I, from what I had heard and the little bit I had read that this carbon sequencing, which of course, you know, is a great idea, you know, but however it works and whatever you have to do, you know, in theory is great, but, but that it was very complicated. Um, and I thought Williamstown had a big heads up because they'd already had a, had some work done in terms of, they have to, inv there have to be inventory, detailed inventorying of what your carbon is for among other things. Uh, but apparently, according to Allison, uh, Mary said that yes, they could do more work, potential, potentially they could do more work developing the next phase, whatever that is, with another $20,000. Of course, they're getting, you know, they're getting, and, and the, their bid award said, said carbon, some, something about carbon inventory. So already with the forest grants, they're supposed to be doing something on carbon inventory. And if they got more money, were given more money here, they would do more on that. That's, that's all I know. And so anybody who really wants to pursue that, uh, I recommend that they talk to Mary Wigmore. So can I ask you about that, Janet? Yeah. I, um, so I, I don't know if you got, I don't know if you got that, um, that 58 page, uh, uh, the, the report from Williamstown. Yes. Right. 
Right. And, and, and so, so that sort of laid out like a, a history of those. First of all, it laid out this history of those three towns that you mentioned, the Westfield, West Springfield. I forget what the third one was. Yeah. yeah. Uh, as having had a project that went all the way through that was, you know, that it talked about the, the first steps, how it came together, how it, how they had a choice of which of the four big carbon, whatever agencies uh -huh. they yeah. could live with and how ultimately the, those three towns split $2 million and that it was profitable. Yes. Ultimately after, you know, up to that point, whenever that report was done, um, I, you know, I think there've been some new developments since then involving one of the town, uh, you know, all, I don't know any more. I know they had already had, in order to get to that, that 58 report says that they had already had a bunch of this detailed inventory. I mean, basically it's expensive to, to mm. do the planning and the research and the numbers and the blah, whatever else to have to get into to, to be in that position anyway um again mary wigmore is the person you need to talk to and um and uh she's on contract to do the grant so and, and she's the the expert you know if and until there are still plans that audubon is is and she can probably fill you in on it is is developing plans is working on it and dcr is working with it with them with audubon to then prepare some model that towns can use i mean and that's why i thought this was just premature but well, but it feels like we could get started doing the inventory well talk to mary okay uh, I, Janet, Janet, does Tom have uh, Mary's contact info? Yes, she's in that, because she, she's in that one, the grant. Yeah. It was okay. one of the three that were awarded the grant. Um, I Is think, there still time to write the grant? I yes, forget. I think the deadline got extended to sometime in June. Oh, good, good. But of course, I think you should get anything there in sooner, and I still personally think everything that's not all state money is going to be frozen. That's my per frozen. It's not, you know, mm -hmm. already. We're just lucky we get things paid for that, right? Yeah. That's my personal fear. All right. So, so your advice is that we do not move ahead with the uh, Mohawk Trails Woodlands Partnership Grant. Uh, no, well, no. My well, no. My advice is yes. Go go ahead if you can get a good convincing the application written and you know if Mary Wigmore would probably help write it but FERCOG also um Peggy um would would consult you know in the in the scope of services for the grant so I you know I think you get enough information go for it yeah, you're saying that not to do the trail project that you originally proposed, but this other project, you know, potentially certainly use twenty thousand dollars. Yeah, potentially, if you could, you know, if it makes sense, if if it can be, you know, the steps and the timing and the you know amount of money. I mean, you got to find out what twenty thousand dollars would exactly buy on yeah. the way to this well, carbon. And that, that you have a comment. The Williamstown study did say that the that the, the place to go, that the place to start is with this feasibility study that they outlined exactly what the parameters of it put. And they said they quote the price depending on the size of the town um, is gonna be between five and twenty thousand dollars. Well there you go, Phil. You got you know, write up the grant application. We're All right. The craft. All right. Priscilla Priscilla, do you have a comment? Um, I did now I don't remember it. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> um uh, oh, I know. I thought Peggy was going to get us um, a copy of what Williamstown had submitted as, as their grant request to look at. Wasn't she going to do that? So we knew she what was. She was a scope of work. Yeah. Or, I mean, maybe their select board would share that with you if it's hard for her. Well, it shouldn't be hard for her to get because it's in her agency. Yeah, that, that's public information. We should be yeah. able to get a copy of that. 
Right. So if we could get that, we could look at what they, you know, requested for their 20,000. But remember, it's, you know, it's got to be tailored for Conway. Uh, right. Because Williamsburg had already done, some previous forester had had done some, the de some detailed carbon inventorying. So they were you know, much further ahead. And then of course they had the students do this very thorough 58 page report. So, you know, our, you can't just slap right on top of whatever Williamsburg did, you know. No, uh, but we could see what they had done. Sure. But again, you know, a lot of the details and the good information is apparently uh, can be gotten from Mary Wigmore. All right, Tom, Tom, would you get in touch with Mary Wigmore on this? Sure. Okay. Priscilla? So, to, John, John, maybe we can keep this on the agenda till, for next week. And, and if it's okay, we, we can, you know, I, I mean, I'd like to work on something like this and, uh, you know, put together a little subcommittee or committee to put an application in. Um, okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll put it on. Or, we'll put it on the agenda for next the, week or, as well. Or at least kick the tires on this a little bit and see what we can to come up with. Okay. You know? Priscilla? Yeah. Just one more question: Has there been any change in the forestry uh, plan agenda for time frames, etc.? Uh, no, not that I, not that I know of. I um, next week. Uh, I'm going to um, bring up later, but I, I suppose I should just bring it up now because it's part of this agenda item. Uh, the um, Mary Wigmore and the uh, the other fellow who are, who are doing the, um, the the study uh, have asked to be on next week's select board call uh, to go through with you the uh, the process for um, for the grant, for the public input and, and, and the whole timeline for the whole project. So um, I'm, uh, I, I, I've made a space for them on next week's agenda. That's great. Thank you. Okay. Good. All right, anything else on this agenda item? Yeah, t t Tom, could, when you get a chance, Tom, when you get a chance, could you please forward to me uh, Mary Wigmore's contact info so I could give her a ring? Yeah, yeah, I, I just I just made a note. That All right, thanks. Thanks. All right, and Tom, we'll put this on the agenda for next week then. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, next item is the policy for deciding that the town is ready for town meeting. Tom, what do you have for us on that? All right, I'm going to say goodbye. Thank you all. Thank you, Janet. Janet, thanks. thanks. And let me put it up. I want to get out of here. <laughs> Leave the meeting. That's all you guys. Leave the meeting. Okay. Oh, thank you. You're still here. Yeah. The um, the, the the first thing I have is the uh, the budget information, and I I sent out a uh, just a little bit of a thought piece on town budget issues, and they're a little bit there. There's there's a choice before us. We can. We can try to pass a budget before June 30th, which is very preferable from the from the uh, staff point of view because it gets it gets complex if you go on to the, the what what is possible now to do, but um, you know setting up kind of a temporary budget for for FY21. So it, it would be great if we could get a budget before June 30th. Um, we could, on the other hand, wait until the legislature has a consensus revenue figure. I'm, I'm betting that the, uh, hang on, I think I have to let, uh, there, that's uh, Lisa coming in. Hey, Lisa. Uh, she, was, she was having trouble earlier. Um, so, you know, the state budget takes months to pass, um, even after they come up with a consensus revenue figure. You know that's um, that's something. 
you know, that, that normally is, is all, you know, like, like a six month process. And one of the things that, that could happen, whether a budget, whether we have town meeting with a budget before June 30th or after, one of the things that we could do is, uh, well, first try to minimize expenses. And um, I, I don't know, I mean, I can, I can send a memo out. We're not going to be able to save a heck of a lot of money because there's not a lot of money that we have budgeted that we, that we don't, um, that we don't spend. But, you know, I, I can certainly tell people to hold off on anything that they can possibly wait till next year for. Um, on the other hand, we have a good budget this year and maybe we want people to spend things. Uh, this year so that we can we can stock up on things like paper or other supplies uh, while, while we while we're still working in a in a good fiscal year um, but uh, one of the paths that I thought uh, was that we could go ahead with a with some kind of a budget with some kind of a cut let's say um, and on the off chance that the state decides to prioritize local aid, which is entirely a possibility, um, one of the things we could do is we could store the amount that we cut in the reserve fund, that is still appropriate it and have it available but not dole it out until we know that this, what the what the state has come out with with its local aid. Could you say that again? And yeah, so the idea would be to come up with a budget that was cut by some sort of consensus percent after we figure out what we thought we might do, but then take the money that we cut, or take the amount that we cut and put that into the reserve fund. And what and so we would have that money in case we could bring the budget back to where it would normally be. But I thought well, the idea was another, that so in other words what what we're talking about is we already have a pretty good budget in place for next year, but we will need to cut that down based on what the state says. So we'll take the difference between what we already approved and what the state might do, take that slice of funds and put it into the reserve fund. Okay? You understand? That would that would have a couple of benefits. First, it would it would stabilize the taxes. That is, they'd be relatively even from last year to the coming year to the following year rather than have it go way down for next year and then conceivably more of a rise the following year and it would allow us a lot of flexibility that is what we would do is we would we would authorize spending but we would sock it away so that the operational budget or some part of the operational budget wouldn't be spending at that level going forward until and unless the legislature said, okay, we're going to hold local aid harmless and, and uh, cities and towns are going to get what they need. So you're talking right here now about a carve out, not including the school budgets, right? Yeah, basically. Yeah. No, it would, it would be across the board. Because no, not, not the, the school, school budgets may get budget. cut as well, but what yeah, we no, would do is we yeah. would we would put all that money in a place where it was accessible, in case it became available. Right. I, I doubt whether the, the town has the legal authority to do that with the school budget to, to put, keep keep part of that money back. I, I that sounds like a dubious legality, but. I, I, I don't. I don't. No. I don't no, think. Phil, I don't think. Phil, chapter, I'm suggesting. I don't think Chapter 70 is going to be touched. I think they'll keep Chapter 70 in place because if they don't, they'll be bedlam. Okay, they're right. going to keep Chapter 70 in place. 
Yeah. Retina cut is stuff is, like the trans stuff like the regional transportation budget are historically juicy targets for them though. Well, and, and, and right, that's a right big, now that the difference between seventy percent like we were going to get and fifty percent like we usually get is huge. Um, so, uh, yeah. Um, um, but we, uh, which which sort of brings me to like the other thing about. The, 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 well, but Phil, what, Phil, hang yeah. on, hang on, Phil. Yeah. Let, let me let me answer your question. Sure. Um, sure. What I'm proposing is that we have enough money to fully fund the current request of Frontier. Right. Just as right. we would fully fund the entire operating budget as it exists now but we would cut some percent and then wait un until th that is for the operating budget. So people went ahead on the assumption that their, their budgets were going to be lower and then bring that back in once we knew that it, that the state was coming through. Well, I mean, so, okay. I understand what you're saying and it's interesting and I got to think about that, but, um, well, essentially what that does for us, Phil, that, that gives us a cushion so that we don't have to go back to a special town meeting to release those funds. Right. I, I understand that. I, I haven't quite got my head around the whole thing yet. So I'm glad there's no vote on something like that tonight, but that's an interesting, well, well, well yeah. we, we can't, we can't vote on that tonight right. because but, we, you know, but it is an interesting approach that I had not thought of myself, and I'm, uh, so it, I'm, I'll, I'll definitely think about it. Um, well, Tom, the, I, I thought that the idea was that we would lower the taxes this year. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, what you're talking about would not do that, right? Correct. Right, and I think that would be good in the long term because it would be it would have people's taxes be stable. I am not at all sure that we are going to run into a a tax deficit, or or or, or that or that we're not going to get what what is owed to the town. There may be a delay in getting it to the town, but that's a cash management issue, not a revenue issue. We we have plenty of time to discuss all this as we move as we move okay. forward. But that's just. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just throwing some things out. And there are, yeah. there are more ideas yeah. in that piece, too. So it, right. it's I, just I starting to figure out how to think about it. So and the other thing that I just sort of wanted to bring to sort of your attention, too, just I, I saw just sort of the way you're referring to making cuts to the, to the school budgets and everything. And I just wanted to, you know, first of all, it is, of course, the school committee that does that. And, um, but, but more importantly, that like... Um, the any type of cuts to a school budget, <coughs> excuse me, cannot really be made with like the surgical precision of a 1% or 2% or 3% or 4%, et etc. et cetera. That when it comes to actually taking a knife to the school budget that has been crafted, you're talking about which programs and services get cut. And each of those has a price tag. But like the idea that sort of any kind of school budget cuts can be clean and surgical and non-painful um, is just sort of delusional. Like, uh, 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 Well, I don't think anybody's suggesting that. What we're saying is if the school gets six or $700,000 in local aid, yeah. if there's an indication yeah. that local aid is going to be cut, you know, in, in some way, I mean, the, the town doesn't get that much. We get a quarter of a million in unrestricted general government aid. We get a right. quarter of a million right. in Chapter 90. Yeah. And we can take care of a lot of that through stabilization. Um, so, again, I'm not all that worried. I'm just putting forward some, you know, more or less worst case scenarios where if, if we thought there was going to be a problem, these are some of the ways that we might address it. Again, it's just the beginning. Right, I, I understand that. I do, and I'm glad that you, I'm glad that you're thinking that you got you know that you're, that you're putting time into considering all these alternatives, um, uh, because we're going to need we're going to need to fall back on this stuff. I think I think there's going to be some cuts for sure. Um, 
and and uh, yeah, yeah, um, and those are really difficult. You know, I, I don't, I certainly don't. You know, I, I don't know, I don't, I, you know, the the when when Sunderland a couple years back had to cut five percent from their school budget um, to stay under two and a half override, and you know, I, I remember watching that on TV and that you know the screaming and the cursing and the crying over losing a music program and losing, you know, um, after school stuff, whatever that people really, really got upset. That's all. We're, well, we're, yeah, we're hoping, and we're hoping it, that doesn't happen. Yeah. We're hoping that chapter 70 stays in place. Yeah, me too. So, yeah, I, I, I just put out some ideas of how to think about it. There, there's, there's a few more nuances in there. You know, look at the piece. We'll be dealing with this over the next month, certainly. We will not be able, very clearly, we will not be able to have um, an indication of just what the state is going to do before the end of the fiscal year. And if we can have a town meeting before the end of the fiscal year, that would be really helpful. So I'm suggesting authorizing more spending then we actually dole out in the beginning just in case. So that's, that's, that's my basic way of thinking here. So we have it available if, if we can use it. Um, and of course, we can also think in terms of how much stabilization should be called on and things like that. Um, but if we could have a town meeting and a budget by the end of the fiscal year, that would be a good thing. And then I just, I just want to stop. We, you. Cause, cause, we, cause we, have to, we have to look, we have to look very carefully at our capital expenditures. And if, if need be, uh, we'll have to throw some of those overboard and we'll have to take some stabilization money to shore up the, the operating expenses. But when I hear this discussion, just sort of based on what our budgetary preferences and desires and needs are, I would just like to remind everybody that the, the first thing about the town meeting has to be the, the safety and health of our residents and especially the yeah, scene. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's the next issue, Philip. That's the next issue we're talking about. And that, you know, yeah. if we can, if, 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 if the Gov doesn't say we can, we can have meetings over 10 with, with more than 10 people by June 30th, then, then I would hope we can have a consensus that we're not going to have a town meeting before June 30th. Philip, Philip we're going we're gonna to follow the guidelines that the state gives us. Okay. Good. But we Good. don't know what those are going to be yet. Correct. We okay. know what they are now. And right now they say no town meeting. Well, it, they I, would have to change. I understand that. So let's not speculate. Well, well, but I mean, that's, that's why I wanted to sort of talk about what the, what, what the parameters are of our decision is in, just in terms of the, sorry, um, the, the time length and, and, and the amount of time that we're going to give residents. Um, and, we'll and, give residents plenty of time, Philip. Plenty of time. And what does that mean? Yeah. Two weeks. And, Four and, weeks. And, and just, just, just one more thing before we move off the finance thing. Um, I sent out a, uh, a corrected Excel sheet that has a number of different size cuts in it. And there are two columns. And one of them is just a, a, a total haircut across the board. And the other um, holds certain categories harmless, inc uh, including uh, salaries and wages and the, the external uh, bills that we get, uh, insurance, debt service, that kind of thing. And I explained that in the, in the email that I sent out. Uh, so you can get an idea of what kind of numbers we're talking about if you look at that. One thing, and I will admit, I, I did not hold the schools harmless in that, but I was only dealing with the operational side of the budget. I didn't even go down into the school budget when I created these figures. So um, the fig actually, I guess that means I did hold the schools harmless, and then I, I'm not, I wasn't proposing any cuts for the schools in the Excel sheet. So um, it's, it's just on the town side, and it's, uh, it just gives you an idea of what we would set aside if we were to um, 
if we were to decide to to try to um, implement some kind of a cut and store strategy. All right. Thank thank you, Tom. Is everybody seeing Tom's spreadsheet? Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now still. Okay. All right. So just kind of look at those numbers over the next week and, uh, you know, kind of digest them. Uh, next issue is the public health issues, state advisories and mandates, any other factors? All right, so we, we know what we're dealing with now. We don't know what we're going to be dealing with in a month from now. Um, hopefully it's not any worse than it is now. Uh, Tom, what do you have on this? Well, uh, as Phil mentioned, we know where we are now. And we all hope that everything gets better. Uh, we know that um, in general, things have been getting better in Massachusetts, but you know there was an uptick again, you know, with uh, yesterday's figures. And the so, governor says we're in the middle of the surge. You know, you know. Well, he said we're in the middle of the beginning of the surge, and we're not going to hit the peak of it to the end of this month. Yeah, and that it's going to be May while we're still in the thick of it. I think you'll find that yeah. most of the of the uptick in Massachusetts is in Middlesex, Suffolk, Norfolk, and Essex counties. If you go yep. west and you come to Berkshire, Franklin, and Hampshire, we're doing much better than they are. We should. We all. <laughs> we, there's a lot fewer of them. <laughs> we all we live should be, but. Uh, yeah, there's no place safe, though. There's no place safe. So, I mean, you know, I, the, the, the one thing, if, if I could, if we could get like a firm commitment on, on, on making a decision, how many days out do we make a decision? I, I mean, my, my thing is, I, don't, I didn't want people to have to get surprised with a postcard three days out saying the town meeting you know, no, it, it, it'll be it'll be a couple of weeks, Phil. It'll be a couple of weeks. It, so We're that's anywhere anyway. So it's not going to interrupt anybody's plans. Yeah, the 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 last select board the select board meeting on May twenty fifth would be like the absolute drop dead. That's two weeks before June eighth. Um, so really, it should be at least the week before that because it's going to take us a while to uh to print the warrants and mail them out. Right. That's what I thought. A three, three week, you know, the select board to do it three weeks ahead of time sounds like the deadline for us. That would be fair for everybody. Um, so, I, so May oh, 18th, we, we will the, know. We will know before that time, okay, whether June eighth is a possibility or not. Right. Right, but it, but we do know already, yeah. though, John, that that June eighth uh, might be a possibility. But that the grammar, you cannot do social distancing at the grammar school, and we know that the, when. When, well, it, we won't have it, it then at the grammar school. Phil, we'll have it outside at the ball field. So it would be so it would be a June six, which would be on a weekend. What do you mean to be on a weekend? Are Are you proposing town meeting to be in the in the middle of a week in the middle of a week on a day in the daytime outdoors? Well, we're, we're going to have if we have to do it outdoors. We'll, it would be on a Saturday or Sunday. Some, sometime. Uh, you know, before 7.30 at night. But it would be on a Saturday or Sunday instead of a weekday. Well, I don't know that. What's the difference these days between a weekend and a weekday? Um, there's, still, there's still a sizable portion of the population that has jobs that they have to go to. Well, then we can, we can switch it to a weekend. What we've done now is push it out. We have other decisions to make before we actually hold that meeting. John, do we have any sense of how many people are at home and how many people are going out to work? Uh, I do not in Conway. I know there's a lot of home-based businesses in Conway. Uh, so I would bet that we had fewer people going out and coming back uh, than most towns. 
You know what, John, Bob? If if we had a if we had a sewage treatment plant, that they they count how many people are in town by counting the toilet flushes in most municipalities. Um, we know. Well, thank you, Phil. I, that's an interesting piece of information. I see. I I I, I try, John. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but. But the, the, the uh, anecdotally, uh, the po Conway population has never been higher because lots of families here are having kids and grandkids quarantine with them. Yeah. Um, and we're going, we're going around and seeing more people and more houses than we've ever seen before. And traffic uh, originally, when they first started the, 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 uh, the quarantine, w w there was n non-existent traffic. I mean, like a dozen cars a day on 116. And now it's peaking up to almost normal traffic flows around uh, morning and uh, be, you know evening rush hour. So I, I think more people are leaving the home, more people are working um, than they were in the very beginning. But uh, you know we're and, and you know we're, all, we're 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 seeing like three generations of people in homes that normally only have one generation. So I don't know. Thank you, Phil. Well, uh, towards the end of June, twilight's about 8.30. I'm sorry, it's about, yeah, it's about 8.30. Uh, sunset, rather. Sunset is at 8.30. And, and Tom, I assume we have no electricity for electric lights in the Newtown garage. Correct. No, not yet. Not till the new one gets built. Yeah. All right, so we'll, we'll monitor what, what's happening at the state level and what regulations are passed down to us. And we'll figure all this out. Uh, it's not something we have to decide on tonight, but it's certainly something we have to be ready to decide on in the next uh, two or three weeks. Tom, do you know how Deerfield and Sunderland are going to have their town meetings that they're talking about? Deerfield, uh, Deerfield's doing it at the Frontier football field. On June 1st. Yes. If they can. What are they uh, using for frontier numbers? Uh, what budget numbers, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no. Yeah, that, that, that's, what, that's what they're trying to get. There, there's so much concern over that, that that's why they had that roundtable call on Thursday. That was to really address that. And, and, and they were... They were all over the place. You know, they, they were really um, unable to, you know, they, they, when, when you hear their own estimates varying so much between, you know, what, what they say, a low of four million billion and a high of 10 billion. And when you hear a spread like that in their own estimates, um, you know, that, that sort of is the same spread that they're handing down to you too. And um, in, in the school budget committee uh, situation, and they, they, all we, all we know is the budget that was crafted and was put together and was a lean budget with 2% uh, increases. Um, and, and, and which, you know, in, in included holding off on all kinds of things, including an OPEB, an OPEB payment, um, which they put, took out of the budget, um, things like that. And so uh, there's a lot of anxiety about that, that, that whole issue, though, and, and a big desire that, that they, you know, it, it's, it's really hard to do a town budget until you can do a school budget, and it's hard to do a school budget until you know what your revenues are. So, <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's, so, why, uh, that's why we're in this quandary right now. Yeah, yeah. All right, next issue. Uh, we got to review the draft notice for notifying the town regarding a town meeting postponement. Thomas? Well, uh, I sent out a, uh, a proposed statement on letterhead. Uh, it's got, you know, eight paragraphs. Um, I tried to say as much as possible while saying as little as possible. <laughs> There was so, a tightrope. Uh, you know, I, I, so, I, I thought, t Tom, the, the, um, the, the, the thing that you put up on town meeting, uh, just announcing the postponement to the June 8th, I thought that was, yeah. a, good, I thought that was a good, good, concise little paragraph. 
because you mentioned that you know that that is subject to change and i thought yeah maybe just a, i thought maybe just a one sentence addition to that just saying that we're going to follow the state you know health public health guidelines in scheduling it i think that would that would do a lot to alleviate anybody's concerns about it and i think that's kind of all that we really need to say but well, I yeah that that i like tom's uh town meeting proposal yeah i'm i'm happy to add the uh that sentence that we will we will certainly abide by state guidance on uh public health issues well, yeah you know that, that that's kind of obvious isn't it no not really it's well, good to say it doesn't hurt to say it what do you, what do you mean not really philip we, we, we're not well maybe it is maybe it is maybe it is to, maybe it is to you and me but it isn't to everybody that would just be reading it so it's good to say stuff like that it makes people feel better john doesn't hurt all right, let's not let's not treat people like third graders, Philip. Huh? Uh, no, I, I think I think assuring people of that um, might might. I, I don't think I don't think there's uh, any harm in uh, in in letting people know that we're we're not aiming to push this through in order to, you know, and we're not we're not. We're not considering taking risks with people's health in order to do this. Well, obviously not. So yeah, it, it, you would be surprised at what people think is obvious and what isn't. Yeah. I, uh, right, so so Tom, put that sentence in there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I I think it's I think it's all right. Um, and and so if. The, and, and just just looking at, at your letter, which if, if you did want to send that out, I don't have any, you know, whatever. But um, the one thing that I just sort of noticed really that if you're going to do the full letter, just a, a, a sentence, just making clear that the state is also not uh, formalized, you know, how much whatever. And that we're a lot of our indecision and a lot of it is based on the state's indecision. Um, yeah, I think the second, the second paragraph says that pretty well. Yeah, and, those, right. and the fourth, the fourth paragraph especially. Eh, I guess. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not taking any more. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm. 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 I'm definitely letting people know that it's it's not our druthers that we're that we're waiting as long as we can. Yeah, we had we had a great budget put together. Unfortunately, you know we uh, we got sidelined here, and we're we're now at at the mercy of what happens at the state level. As always, as always. Well, okay. It was a little more stable about two months ago than it is now. <laughs> <laughs> the world wasn't upside down yet. Yeah, that's true. All right, so we have no more new, we have no new business. Tom, we have any items not anticipated 48 hours in advance? No. Tom, do you have an update? Why, yes, I do, fairly short. Um, okay. Just one, one piece of committee news. Uh, the second newsletter is on track and should be coming out on time. Uh, the The overall shape of the newsletter is um, is still forming, but it is stabilizing. So I think uh, I think they got off to a good start, and they have a lot more decisions to make, but they're starting to make them, and that's all going well. I thought I thought the first uh, edition I thought the first edition was very impressive. It was a real pleasure. Yeah. And it was such a pleasant surprise to the people in town, too. Yeah. Oh, good. Glad to hear that. Yeah. yeah if anybody, if you yeah. know anybody who has any compliments on it, send them in. I'll make sure the newsletter committee gets them. I think they need to know, you know, that people think they're doing a good job. Yeah. That would be uh, helpful. I, I or send it directly to Pat Lynch or any of them. 
Yeah, they, they did include their email in the first, um, in the first, and I was told that numerous citizens did actually, uh, you know, send in their. Okay. Yeah, I did as well. Good. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. It, 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 it really makes a difference. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, so in departmental news, um, first, I just wanted again to draw people's attention to the website. We have a page, a COVID-19 page, with current information on COVID-19, and it's got a lot of information in it, including the fact that there are no cases now in Conway. So that's the page that if the Board of Health hears of a case in Conway, that's where it's going to show up. And we have links to the Board of Health page, to the state page, to we have resources. Um, we always put up the MEMA situation report there. Uh, so it's a, it, if, you, uh, if you want to check, that, that's a good place to look at. And where do um, you find that so came from? Uh, Current information there are, about COVID? There are th three links to it on the front page. So you won't um, have any trouble finding it. This current um, did, you, did you see today's report? Yes. With, with, with all the charts? Yeah, DPH. They, they really great? upped their Was game. They that started yesterday that with that. The new one, it's yep. 17 pages yep. long or something. It's fantastic. Yeah, it's really, really good. Um, they really up their game with that, and it's uh, well. You know it, what it is? They they have enough data now to do that. Yeah, and and I think everybody at DPH was struggling to actually solve the problem, and now they've they've got some extra resources, and they're putting people into analysis. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of good. A lot of good information. Um, uh, second here, uh, I've gotten a renewal summary from Maya that I'll put on the agenda for the next meeting. It came in just under the budget I had proposed. Uh, I do not yet know the subcontracted police and fire insurance we have for Chapter 111 obligations, which is injured on duty. Uh, that comes through a company called Chubb, um, but I have the majority of the, I, I, I have the Maya information anyway. So we can go over that next week. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, uh, we'll need to meet with the consultants for the forest stewardship plan for your initial input into the timeline and process and to answer any questions you may have, especially about public input, which will of course be different during this time of physical distancing. Right. I have begun right. uh, with Lisa to set up a page on the town website for related materials. You can find that under government. The very first thing in the menu item under government now is forest stewardship plan, and it's got the proposal that they sent in up there now. Uh, so uh, people can ultimately have, an access, have access to a variety of materials and links to surveys and further resources. So that page will be built out as we go forward. Um, another... Uh, Another budgetary note, the four Frontier District town administrators had a conference call with the Frontier Superintendent to check in on the budgetary process. A joint select board meeting for the four towns to discuss the FY budget might be useful as a couple of select boards have already gotten involved with different proposals. Of course, the Frontier School Committee is presumably addressing this as well, and it might be good for the combined boards to hear from that body so everyone can get closer to being on the same page. A co coordinated strategy would certainly help us get, get us to an FY21 budget. Um, it, was, it was a little distressing to see one select board um, mandating Frontier to um, cut, you know, a percentage and another one to cut a dollar amount um, with ne neither one of them seemingly based on um, particularly uh, transparent, you know, 
criteria for where they came to those numbers for you know for Frontier to work with. So I think I think Darius was very interested in making sure that the that the select boards be part of the process so that uh, they're not all going off in different directions. So maybe we can arrange some kind of a call over the next few weeks to to get select boards together on that. Or yeah, that, that might be good. good. Um, that, yeah. that, that's certainly something we have to do. And as you say, <coughs> as you say the, the, the situation with... Um, uh, could, Who's talking to that? Who's is that? Yeah, hold, mute, hold on a mute second. Mute the dog. Mute, mute, mute. Mute the dog. Was that really John's dog? <laughs> I'm thinking it might have been. John! I well, he hasn't running. fed him. It's after seven now, and he hasn't fed him yet. I don't know. <laughs> He, he, he really did mute the thing. <laughs> ah. Oh, my goodness. Okay, we're back. And, you know, I, I, was, surprised, I was surprised that uh, the two select boards went and wrote those letters without having more detailed information about, you know, where they stand. So, uh, yeah, it... it uh, I, th I think Darius was concerned about that, and uh, it would be great if we could uh, if we could start addressing that separate. You know, it might make a lot of sense for the four chairs to get together, so it's not even a public meeting, and just talk it talk about it. So I I don't know. Maybe you want to initiate that, or um, but but somehow there's got to be a coordinated. Yeah, program we, we, have, here. we have to sit down. We have to sit down together on this. But anything to do with regarding the school budget should always be an open meeting and transparent. We shouldn't do any kind of non-open meeting, anything that touches upon school budgets. Well, that's not what we're talking about here. Well, that was Tom. That was Tom's we're, suggestion. We're, we're, t we're talking about the four chairs of the boards getting together and talking about a concerted effort and a coordinated effort to move forward. Anything else, it wouldn't be a deliberation. Anything that would be deliberative, it would be an open meeting. Yeah, I, I don't want yeah, to. This, this, is a, this is a process thing that we need to get straight. It's administrative, Philip. It's not deliberative. Yeah, well. So anyway, I just had one more thing, which uh, confirming something else that was said earlier that the response date for the next round of Mohawk Trail Woodland Partnership Town Implementation Grants has moved to June 18th, 2020. So that's the, um, that's the timeline for the grant. June 18th is the deadline for that. And that's Thanks, all I have. Great, thank you, Tom. Concerns of the selectmen. Philip, do you have any concerns? Um, People aren't buying enough pizzas or going to get going to bakers enough. People still got to supply the, the support our local. I know that the, the, the quarantine keep, keeps going, but people got to keep supporting their local businesses. That's all. I, I did put notices up on the website about both of those businesses. Those were great. Some of us are supporting our local businesses. I know. Oh. Pizza every night. <laughs> well, I don't know about every night. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm good. Thanks, John. You're good. Okay. I, I have no concerns right now. Uh, our next meeting is scheduled for uh, Monday the 27th via Zoom. Great. Okay. Anybody else have anything? Any announcements at all aside from supporting our, our local establishments? No? Nope. Okay, I'll make a motion that we adjourn. Do I have a second? Yes. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Okay. Thank you all, and we'll uh, we'll see you on the Zoom conference next Monday.